Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I installed this grid tied solar system to my accessory building for around $1 per watt. In this video I use string inverters, but in a future video I plan on installing more panels here using micro inverters. Before we get into the how to section, let's break down the costs really quick. For permits, including the city and the power company to install the net meter, that was $410. For 16 of these 385 watt panels, including shipping, that was $1,921. This Fronius Primo Gen 24 5 kilowatt inverter, $1,725, including shipping. Now the rails and mounting hardware, including shipping, was about $1,093, and miscellaneous electrical, including cables and conduit, $227. That puts my entire system at $5,376 or after tax credits, around $3,600. Now, I am not a professional solar installer, nor am I a licensed electrician. Just because I do something one way in this video does not necessarily mean that that is the best way or even the right way. These warning stickers are red for a reason. High voltage is dangerous. Remember, safety first, and please reach out to the professionals for any steps in which you do not have the proper training. Now you may ask what the city required me to turn in as far as plans. And so let me go over that really quick. The first document they needed was a site layout. They wanted a general layout of the panels as well as the mounts and rails. They also wanted to know the total amount of weight per mount as well as the total amount of weight per square foot. They wanted a detailed schematic that showed the maximum open circuit voltage for the panels as well as the short circuit current. They also wanted to know the wire types and gauges. Now I know there's a lot going on in these plans, so I will leave a link to my plans in the description below so that you don't have to keep pausing the video. Power Company wanted a one-line schematic that showed all of the major equipments along with descriptions as well as locations for all of the warning labels. Now, because I didn't use engineered trusses for my outbuilding and I designed my own, I had to demonstrate that they were strong enough to not only hold the snow and wind ratings for my area, but also support the solar panels. And some jurisdictions may make you get this part stamped off by a structural engineer. My city also wanted to see evidence of proper flashing to prevent water damage to the structure. I also turned in the data sheets for the major components, such as the rails, the panels, and the inverter. Speaking of panels, if you're looking for some great deals, check out the links in the description below. First things first, let's get this box opened up and see what we have. Got some unpackaging instructions, and there's our quick guide. Yeah, it's heavy. And underneath, looks like we have our cover. I just loosened these five screws and I just want to take a quick peek inside before we get too far along. Here on the left side of the unit is where we will bring in our DC lines from our solar panels. And over here on the right hand side, we have our AC wires that go to our disconnect. We have line one, line two, neutral and ground and ground bar. And right here we have a connection if you want to hook up an outlet that is just powered directly from the inverter. Now when I built this building, I knew I was going to eventually add solar. So I pre-installed some metal conduit that runs up to both sides of the roof. That conduit is bonded to the Eufor ground of the building. I also added the AC disconnect here that's connected to the bottom breaker in this panel. And we'll talk about why we go to this bottom breaker here in a little bit. Now inverters are not supposed to be mounted directly to drywall or any other combustible material. So I'm going to put up a plywood backer board that is faced with cement board so we can mount our inverter. With the backer board in place, we can now install our mounting plate for the inverter. And now we can hang our inverter. Pretty easy. So it is a nice cloudy day and I'm trying to get these rails on before it starts raining. And really I find it's going pretty quickly. I'm using these Iron Ridge rails with supports every four feet. 
Now each solar panel has different uh, spacing requirements between the rails and for my solar panels it wanted approximately 45 inches between rails. The first thing I did was run a string all the way down then use a hammer to find the truss right there. Next you want to pre-drill a hole to make sure that you hit the truss and uh, have a good mounting point. Next, I tuck some flashing into the singles above and I put some roofing sealant in a horseshoe pattern around the bolt, but not at the bottom to allow water to drain out if it ever gets in there. There is a little gasket underneath this L bracket and the lag bolt itself has a washer too. But I put some roofing sealant down the hole just to make sure. Now my rails aren't long enough so I had to get a few of these splices and what's neat about them is they have a sharp edge here that bonds the two pieces electrically together so you don't have to jump around with a ground wire. Now these T-bolts make installation very easy as they can just drop into the track and rotate and lock in place. That allows you to pre-install it loosely in the L bracket and then come back later and attach the rail. In order to get the wires from the solar panels down to the inverter, I need to cut a hole in the roof. And to do that, I'm going to use this two-piece J-box. And the first step is to gently pry up the shingles to loosen up, which I've already done. And then this flashing piece will insert up to these two tick marks like so. But before I do that, I'm going to apply some sealant all the way around this to give it a good seal. Now before I install this box, I'm just going to hold it in place. And there's three little guide holes here. I'm going to use the middle one to just drill a small pilot hole through for reference. And the reason I did that is the hole in the roof is going to be slightly larger than the hole in the box. All right, conduit fitting there, and don't forget your bushing. So that should sit just like that. Now, because I'm daisy chaining my solar panels, I have to reach all the way down to the end of the roof. So I've got this extension cable here that is coming through a gland connector into the box, and then another one on this end, which will connect to the solar panel that's right here. Also, I've added a gland connector here for the ground wire that will connect to the rails eventually. All right, back here at the inverter on the AC side, I've got line one neutral and line two connected. Comes with this very easy to use connector. You just lift these up, strip the wire, stick it in and crimp it back down. And then that sucker plugs right in there just that easy. I've got the ground wire coming to the bus bar here. Now on the DC side, we need to go back up to those junction boxes on the roof, feed some wires down that will connect to the DC side of the inverter. All right, now that I've got the conduit connected to the back of the box with all the cables coming in through their gland connectors, we can screw the box to the roof. All right, this is THHN wire that's running all the way from the junction box on the roof directly into the inverter. We've got PV1 positive, PV1 negative, PV2 positive, PV2 negative. It's very important to make sure you keep your circuits separate. So I've made my east panels blue and my west panels orange. As these are high voltage DC lines, you want to make sure you connect them to your inverter before you plug in your solar panels before they're energized. And also code requires that these high voltage DC lines, once they penetrate into your house, through your roof, through your wall, whatever, they need to be in metal conduit. So I have flex metal conduit up in the attic and connecting to the inverter. And in the wall, I have rigid conduit. 
I have number six bare copper wire, which I will use to connect to all four rails once my lugs come in the mail, hopefully that soon. And then inside the jumper box, uh, bring them all together into this bus bar here and connect some number six THHN. Uh, has to be insulated in order to go through the conduit. This goes through the conduit all the way down to the ground rod for my accessory building. This is the Iron Ridge hidden end clamp. So basically you lay the solar panel over the top of it and it clamps on there and then you can cut this rail flush and install an end cap so that there's no fasteners hanging over the edge. Of course we will be using our drop-in uh, mid clamps that will join two panels together. I also have some Iron Ridge cable organizers that snap right into the rail. And then I have these uh, also that snap onto the solar panels themselves to help arrange the cables underneath. So good news, my bonding lugs finally arrived in the mail. So now we are ready to start installing panels. If you are installing panels on the roof of your house, code requires that you leave a path for the firefighters to walk on, but since this is an outbuilding, I can pretty much take up the entire roof. And just like that, we have a roof full of panels. Now, before I put the cover back on this inverter, I'm gonna check the voltage between P1 positive and negative and P2 positive and negative, just to make sure all the connections we did on the roof are correct. All right, we've got 380.3 volts on the east panels and on the west panels, 377.7. Now the final step in the installation and the one that the power company probably cares the most about is the stickers. And you can get these kits on Amazon that have all the stickers you need and include a little guide to tell you where to put them. Today is an exciting day. Last week I passed my inspection with the city and today the power company came on just a few minutes ago and installed my new net meter and gave me permission to turn on the inverter. Okay, so how this works is basically two meters in one. When you see the number 14 on the left, these are the total kilowatt hours consumed by my home. And when you see the number 24 in the left, those are the total number of kilowatt hours returned to the grid. And this little arrow here at the bottom is indicating that power is flowing from the grid to my home because my inverter is not yet turned on. Here's the first day's production numbers, 11.61 kilowatt hours, which is pretty good considering it is the 19th of December, only two days away from the winter solstice, where the days are about five hours shorter than they are in the summer. So it only gets better from here. I'm pretty excited to see how this thing does through the spring and the summer. I will definitely be posting a one year follow up to this video. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that it was a good idea to put your solar breaker down at the bottom of the panel. And this is the reason why. This is a 125 amp rated panel, currently sourced by a 100 amp breaker coming from the house and now a 30 amp breaker coming from the PV system for a total of 130 amps, which exceeds the 125 amp rating. But because these are as far apart as they can be, the National Electric Code allows you to uprate your panel by 20%. Well, hopefully you found this video useful. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in learning about microinverters, I will be doing another video very soon. Thanks for watching.